Hi, since it's about time for advising to start before registration for spring semester, I thought I'd give you a preview into the process. So one thing that's different in the biology department from some other departments is that faculty advise all of our majors every single semester. And in fact, we put a hold on your registration account so that you actually can't even sign up for classes until you've been in to see your biology advisor. So I'm going to go ahead and open a web browser and you're going to receive an email in the next couple of weeks from Dr. Woolley, who's our department chair, and in that he'll provide you with the directions on how to get started on signing up for your advising. So it might seem really early, but because we need to see all of our students before the first day of registration, then you want to make your appointment now so that you can be sure to find one that fits in your schedule. And so that email is going to provide you a link to the biology advising site. So I'm going to type in biology.csustan.edu and enter. And here's the biology department homepage. Hopefully you've been here before. We provide a lot of information and sometimes some news. And what you're going to be looking for for advising is a tab on the left side of your screen. And you can see it here, shaded in dark gray, advising. When I click there, then you'll notice that there are tabs for advising, special notes, so there's some interesting information here about prerequisites for the major, which you're working on now with General Bio 1, the core of the major, concentrations, and advisors. But what you'll need to do is actually start out on the left side. Notice there are two really important places that you could click. One says student worksheet, but don't do that yet. What you're going to do is click the student sign up form. And when you click there, it's going to bring you to this page, which asks you to enter your ID. And it asks you to enter your first name. And it should be your official first name, the way that it's written on our roll sheets. And then when you click to log in, it'll give you a whole series of times that your advisor, who's been assigned to you, that your advisor is available to meet. And you pick the one that you like the best, put it in your calendar, enter in that you're going to be meeting at that time, and then go to see your advisor in the next few weeks at that scheduled appointment. Now, if none of the appointments are outside of your class times or outside of your work hours, then you should email your advisor right away. Let them know and ask if there's another time that they could meet. Most of us are really accommodating. And so these are really your actual faculty members. We have a lot of classes and responsibilities as well. And so we need to find a time that works for all of us. OK, let's go now. Notice this line that says, students, please be sure to return to the biology advising worksheet page, update it, and bring it to your advising appointment. So this is going to be new when you're a freshman, but it's going to be old hat by the time you're done as seniors here at Stan State. So you'll click on that link. And once again, you're asked to enter in your student ID and also your first name and click to log in. So click to log in. Of course, I didn't enter but I have pulled up a student advising form for us to look at together. So here's one that belongs to a student named Mark. And notice that Mark's advisor is Dr. Kong, who is a microbiologist in our department. I hope you'll meet him maybe for a molecular biology class, cellular molecular biology, maybe for a microbial class, microbiology. And this is going to be the advising worksheet that we use with all of our biology majors. So the way that it's organized is that on the left side of your screen is all of the GE in the first column, but on the right side of the screen is all of the requirements for the biology major in the right side column. And so let's start out looking at GE on the left side. Notice that we have area A. There are three classes required. They're all communication skills required, and it's going to require a total of nine units. So you take a speech class, you take an English writing class, and then you also take a course on critical inquiry. And once you've required, taken all three of those requirements, then your area A for general education has been completed. Now, you don't have to take these in any particular order. You just have to get them done before you finish your time and you're ready to graduate. So again, you have nine humanities classes and you have several different courses to choose from. And you can look at the catalog of classes to find out what each of these are. And your advisor will go over this with you as well. Social sciences, you have particular classes you need to take. 
We have individual resources for modern living. Some people take personal computing, some take help in today's society. There's also a very good class that's offered by the geography department, this one. It's called the GIS or Geographer's Toolbox and it introduces you to using a GPS as a tool rather than just a mapping device in your car. It introduces you to some of the online tools that are actually really useful in your career as a biology major. You do need to take one PE class. It's a credit, no credit course. You have lots to choose from there. And then after you have official junior status, but not before, once you have more than 60 units, you can take your upper division GE courses and you'll need three there. At least one course that you take has to satisfy the multicultural requirement. And hopefully you'll choose, maybe you'll choose, well, maybe not a science class, but maybe you'll choose a ethnic studies class that also happens to satisfy See if we can find it here. That also happens to satisfy the multicultural requirement. So hopefully you can get one class to count for two things there. Let's move on to the right side and just take a look at what's going to be required for the biology major itself. So right now you're enrolled in General Bio 1 and that's what the IP would stand for here in progress. So General Biology 1, Fall 2014. So presumably you'll be taking General Biology 2 in spring 2015. And you may have started your chemistry this fall. If you started your general chemistry, then you'd be taking General Chemistry 2 in the spring. And so that would be your plan. So each time that you meet with your advisor, you work on adding in what classes did you complete last semester, what classes are you currently taking, and what classes are you planning to take next semester, until you have something selected for all of these areas. So you'll notice the prerequisites for biology include general biology 1 and 2, general chemistry 1, general chemistry 2, and those both have labs as well. You have organic chemistry and organic chemistry lab, but they are graded separately, so you can take them different semesters if you need to. You have to take a math class, either statistics or a calculus class in order to satisfy your biology prerequisites. And then you have a year of physics. So basic physics is the one that's recommended for biology majors. And again, these courses are five units. That means they also have a lab and a discussion section. Let's look at the core of the major. In the core of the major, you'll need to take cellular and molecular biology. You'll have to take intro to genetics and also evolution. So three courses there. And then you start to have some choice. So for your second genetics course, you have several courses to choose from. Structure and function are going to be like physiology kinds of classes that you have several to choose from. Ecology, you have several choices. Diversity classes, learning about diversity of plants, animals, microbes, you have choices there. Complementary courses will depend on what concentration you choose, and your advisor will tell you more about that. And then you have some elective courses to sort of round out your abilities and your major itself. So how do you know what these classes are and which ones you need? I thought maybe we'd take a look just really quickly at the catalog. The catalog is really important. The year that you started college, whether it's here at Stan State or whether it was somewhere else, is the year to which you have catalog rights as long as you never missed a semester. As long as you've been in school fall and spring continuously since you started college, you have catalog rights to that year. So let's go back to the university main page. So here we are, csustan.edu. And this time, instead of going straight to the students tab like I normally would do, let's go to academics. So we'll click on academics. And from academics, what we're going to be looking for is the catalog. And so we scroll down a little ways, and here it is, academic catalog. And I'm going to click there. So we click on academic catalog. And now that we're in the catalog, we can use it to learn about academic programs. And so let's go ahead and click there on academic programs because your academic program is your major. And so here we go forward, academic programs, majors and concentrations. Let's click on that. And then we have a list to choose from. So as we scroll through, notice there's a biological sciences BA 
There's also the Biological Sciences BS. For the BA, you can either have the Organic Chemistry or the Physics. For the BS, you have both. And the number of elective units is also different between the two of those. So usually students prefer to complete the BS. It's a little bit more rigorous and it gives you a broader background in the sciences. So let's go ahead and click on BS. And from there, it's going to take us to the requirements for your biology major. So as we continue to scroll down, there's some background information. But notice that we're going to start on number one, complete the university general education requirements. Remember on your advising sheet, that's going to be the left hand side of that worksheet. And then starting with number two is where we move to the right side of your advising worksheet. And so prerequisites in your major. General Bio 1 and 2. Let's scroll down a little farther. There we go. Gen Chemistry 1, Gen Chemistry 2, Organic Chemistry, just like we talked about. Mathematics, either stats or calculus. Many of our students end up taking both. In a year of physics, it can be either basic physics, which is the one that's not calculus based, or notice you can take a year of physics with lab that's going to be calculus based, and that's the one that the physics majors take as well. And then you also have the courses for a concentration, which your advisor will talk with you about. And you can read about the concentrations farther down in the catalog. So here's the major. You take cell and molecular biology, introductory genetics, and evolution. And if you're curious about what any of those courses entail, you can click and you can read the brief catalog description of them. So introductory genetics, introduction to classical molecular and population genetics, Modern applications, including genetic engineering and biotechnology, will be discussed. It tells you what the prerequisites are for the course. You have to have your general bio 1 and 2 and your general chemistry 1 and 2. And it's going to be a three-hour lecture course. And it's offered every semester. As we continue down, then you can learn about the concentrations. And so I recommend that you look at this, you know, at least, at least early in your sophomore year. Start thinking about which concentration you might choose. So just one more thing before I wrap up. I know this is a really long video, but I did want you to be ready for your advising appointment. I wanted to point out another resource that you have for your success as a biological sciences major. So with the bio degree, you're going to take a lot of tough science coursework, and you already own a tool that could really enhance your success. And I think a lot of students don't really take advantage of their old textbooks. But if you consider that you're going to have to take a class in genetics, if you look at your biology, Campbell Biology book that you're using for General Biology 1, that you're going to use next semester in General Biology 2, you probably already noticed that there's a lot of fine detail that we're not covering. Well, what do you think you're going to learn about in genetics class, for example, or your second genetics class, or how about cell and molecular biology? So you're going to be learning about all of these things in greater detail and certainly your Campbell book has a whole unit that's just on genetics. It has a whole unit just on evolution. In fact, there's another unit with evolutionary history of biological diversity. You're going to take a physiology course. We haven't even talked about animal form and function. You're going to learn very little bit about that in general biology too, but you might want to be able to refer back to some general biology information to help you to have a really solid foundation when you're just starting in your animal physiology class or in your plant physiology class in the future. So I really recommend that you keep the loose leaf version of your textbook rather than sell it back and use it as a resource for your success in your future classes. We've designed the major so that the advanced classes build on the basics and I'm hoping that you're going to keep that in mind. Really retain your knowledge the best that you can. Don't cram and forget but Really learn, really expand your knowledge so that you can have an easier time meeting with success in your future classes. So keep an eye out for that advising email that's going to be coming from our department chair, Dr. Woolley. And if you have any questions about it when it comes, feel free to ask me or you can always stop by the biology department office. Anyways, I'll see you in class.